Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to Pink Lady Presents, a show filled with people whose lives they are living well. And today, well, <laughs> what can I tell you? Today I have two people who are absolutely quiet, shy, and very humble. Ah, ah, that would be the epitome of really being funny. Because today I have Susie Singer Carter and Don Prius with me, who are two people who are out there who are making the entertainment world definitely stand up and cheer for what they're doing. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Wow. I, and scene. Yeah, I, what, what we wrote there was you did that's it very great. Yeah. That's the first take. Done. <laughs> done and done. Well done. <laughs> oh my God. Now, it all started when dear little Susie here was five years old, okay? <laughs> now, normally when someone asks you a question to a little five-year-old, I mean, you expect a cute little answer, whatever. And anyway, someone asked, and here we have, now you have to picture this, everyone, a little girl, blonde, little pink tutu, I mean, really, just darling, You're ed edible, edible, right? <laughs> and you say to her, dear little girl, what do you want to be when you grow up? And in her indubitable way, shy, quiet, she yells, <sighs> Everything, duh. I mean, <laughs> and that's Susie. Susie, that's you. I mean, it, it just is. So, tell me something about who is Susie Singer Carter? Wow. Well, I'm not a two. I don't wear tutus anymore. But I, I would. I got to say, I wouldn't. I would like them a lot. I, I'm. I'm a writer, director, producer, actress, creator. I'm a mother. I'm a daughter. Yeah. I'm uh, a friend, right. and um, I'm, I, I'm a storyteller. That's yeah. what I like to do. I think stories are very powerful, and, and, um, and I've, you can touch people with stories, with, your, with things that you know, things that you experience right. are your gifts. Dawn, yeah. what would I say about you? Mm. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> well, basically, I'm, I, too, am a writer, director, actor, voiceover <laughs> actor more than actor, actor. Well, both, right. I'd say. And uh, basically, I just do whatever she says. That's, ah, that's, uh, and he <laughs> that's you do wear a tutu from time to time? If you say so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd like to see a picture of that, wouldn't you, audience? <laughs> that, would be, that would be very Done cute. and done. Uh, you have 30, uh, like 30, 40 different things that you've done in your life, literally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't believe it. It's like you're a singer. Uh, radio show host. So what was that? You had a radio show? I did. I, in, when I was in college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I started I had that. It and then a flag twirler. What is a <laughs> wow. flag? I mean, hello everybody. What is a flag wow. twirler? Well, a flag twirler is somebody who was head cheerleader and then somehow got, got Ghosted. <laughs> I got. I got. Uh, no. What's it called? Not ghosted. I was. Um, I was uh, canceled. Yeah. Canceled. Oh, it wasn't oh. called canceled then. then but but was I was like. I was head to, and then I decided. Well, okay. I'm not going to be. I, I'm not going to go the next year. I'll be a twirler then instead. Oh. I got to. Oh. I got to perform. Oh. So you're I not going to hold me down. Right. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a flag. I'll Give do, me a flag. I'll, I'll, do, I'll twirl it. <laughs> adapt. I, adapt. Adapt. Yeah. And Resilience. Then, what, what was a cheerleader. I was a cheerleader. Yeah. 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 I mean, like hello there. And what is a, a party planner that you did? I mean, is that like someone who does events or, or what? Oh, I, I wasn't really a party planner. I just, that, that I think if, what you're referring to is the fact that I knew that I was a producer because yes. from a little girl, I was always planning parties for people. Ah, okay. And planning a party, like at 10 years old, like I'm talking like ah. going to McDonald's and renting their like orange whip machine you right, know right. and like saying well we're having a surprise party for my friend she's turning 11 you know <laughs> and so and having them deliver it and like so I knew that that was like something that I could visualize something and then and execute it and I, I think that's those are those are the tools of a producer that's, that's really right. what it is 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 you, well, know. you have everything going for you I mean because you're so quiet and you know, yeah. and you're unassuming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're like, hello. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have a, a little bit of a video here that I would like our audience to see. And I want to tell them about it. And it's an award winning uh, film that you did uh, with, it's the dance, um, one second now, it's the Re Dance Revolution. Well, there was two shows we right. did for C Saturday morning, CBS Saturday morning, right. Cake. 
right. which was a uh, sitcom craft show, and then Dance Revolution, which was a competition dance show for kids. Right. And I we produced it. them, wrote them, co Directed. executive produced them all at the same time. Uh, we, do, we did both shows at the same time. Why this group? Because teenagers are tough. I mean, they just are. I mean, I, I'm, I'm growing up with my great grandkids mm -hmm. now, and literally, and my grandkids, I mean, when I talk to them at 10 and 11 and all that, I mean, one minute, oh, pink grandma, we love this. And then 10 minutes later, oh, pink grandma, we love that. Wait, wait a minute. Well, what happened to the thing that you liked before? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I love, I've always loved kids, every okay. stage of them. And, and I feel like I, and I have two daughters, and I've, I've loved every uh, stage of it. And I feel uh -huh. like I can, I am really a 13 year old girl at all times at in heart. my head. At, at heart. heart, yeah. As and, am I. As is Don. Yeah, and that's why we get along so well. <laughs> 13 year old girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, He's my BFF, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, I, and I just I relate to them, and I get right. it, and I think as you know, I think the success of being a mother is to be is to put yourself in, in their shoes yeah. and try to remember back to when you were five or when you were ten or when right. you were thirteen, and what what were you feeling, and what were those changes that you were going through, and and how did you feel, and and try to to use empathy, right, right, and, and just do it. We're gonna watch this okay. right now. I want to fix the forest. I think that'd be tremendous. <laughs> Get it? Tree mendous. Tree meant fix man of the trees. <laughs> Rough crowd. I see what you mean. Right? Wow, they're adorable. Each little <laughs> one. I mean, I, I, want, I want to really see the whole thing. We yeah. just show little clips of it, but everyone, where can they get these? They're still. They were on. Um, well, for a while, Netflix? Cake, Cake was on Netflix. It's, okay. I don't think it's on. You can find them on, you know, on, on YouTube and Good. things like that. You can find Great. episodes. The one thing we found, though, is that you know, because these were done a while back. That there are certain, you know, consistencies, even no matter how the world changes, right. that appeal to children, yeah. and you know, and I and I think we were able to find those things that became, you know, we cr we tapped into it with crafts, like right. crafts became the the conduit and and the and the the tool, the device for solving problems that were bigger. Right. Yeah. So you use those, and those are fun, and they're proactive, and they're collaborative. Yeah, you that was on I think you're right yeah. on target with mm -hmm. that. Uh, Susie, you did something for writers that I think is phenomenal, especially women writers. Uh, you wrote a book, uh, so Trailblazing, the Female Writers. Let's talk about that. Okay. What was the name of the book? Well, it's not a book, actually, so mm -hmm. do you want to... So take it. Okay, so it's is actually a documentary. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. There are actually two documentaries. Two documentaries. I get. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I did two documentaries for Women's History Month at for the WGA. Wow. One of them was called Women Who Write the Way, or Women Wrote, Who Wrote women the, who way. Wrote the okay. Way. Let me say it again. Ah, women okay. Who Wrote I the like Way. I like that. Okay. And it was really the trailblazers, and I and I interviewed about twenty, about two dozen of our top writers, from Phyllis Nagy to wow. Tina Fey. Oh wow! And and really just talking about how they broke the glass ceiling and how they stayed above the glass right. ceiling and and really opened that those pathways for the next generations of female writers to 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 uh, you know to persevere right and to be successful and and I'm really proud of it because no one's really before that had really you know shined a spotlight yeah right. and and then so I followed it up the next year with something called breaking good yes, and that was right. the younger that was not and now when I say younger it doesn't mean age I'm not talking okay. age because age is is to me it's it's, it's, it's not well and it's, it's a, and it's irrelevant yeah. it's irrelevant <laughs> exactly. it's irrelevant because exactly. you can do whatever you want whenever you want there you go if you have if you want to do it so it's like I just, you know, there was women that were breaking into the industry at 50, yeah. and then there were 20-year-olds, and I oh. wanted to hear I their broke stories. I 72. Yeah, there you there go. You go. <laughs> I mean, there's, honestly, like, you're such a great role model right. for that, because it, it's true. It is. There's, if you're here, yeah. there's a way. Yeah, I, I told someone, uh, someone asked me, they said, you turned 89 into your 90th year now. I, I mean, what's happening? I said, well... What should happen? <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm here, I'm working. I'm, yeah, I mean, it was like a surprise to them. Yeah. So, but I see what you're saying. And, yeah. And you're right, there's a lot more of us that are coming up a lot like of, that too. Yeah, a lot of people put uh, uh, boxes around us and say, you know, this is where you're at yeah. at this stage of your life. Right. You shouldn't be doing yeah. that. No, no, what no. You, you, you actually should be. That's right. 
Don, yes. award-winning writer-director, 20 years, co-founded Modern Media, I mean, tell us about it. Modern Media Group was, I mean, I'll do a very Reader's Digest version because now we're act, it's out, actually 37 years ago was when we started. Wow. wow you're yeah, old. I know. Well, that I'm older. Yeah. I started when I was one. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we was, some friends and I, we were, we had a comedy group and we wanted to, to shoot our comedy skits. We don't know why. There was no internet. We what we were going to do, we bought a camera, somebody found out we had a camera, they hired us to do a job, we thought, hey, if they'll hire us, somebody else will, and we turned into a production company, and years and years and years later, it turned out that suddenly that production company became, uh, we did a commercial, or we did an infomercial for a tool called InStyler, which oh. one of my partners helped develop, right. and InStyler became us, it became our brand, and it's still here today. We're mm -hmm. all over the world, we're in everywhere. Love it. And so, a very long, but I'm still there, still still doing it. A long, you know, that was my day job, and then <laughs> what we do is my night job. And uh, you have to have an afternoon job. There I mean, is like, hello. The afternoon job is <laughs> we don't talk about no. that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> well, that's where I make my big money. So. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> good. I love it. Yeah. Uh, we will be right back. It's about the humans, these humans, those humans. Groovin' and Golden. It's about getting more than health insurance and a partner who listens and acts. Humana calls it human care. It's talking to a doctor from your couch or helping you find a cheaper prescription before you ask. It's helping you fix the rugs so you don't fall and keeping you social, online or off. It's getting to know you so you can be your healthiest. That's our superpower. That's human care from Humana. We're back. Here we are. So... There's so much happening in the two of you in the lives of what you're doing that it's like, wow, I'm doing this. Wait, I better talk about this. I don't want to forget that. Let's start with something that I adore. Mm -hmm. And I think the world now is beginning to say, wow, we love it. And the word love is in it. And it's I love Lucifer. Yes. 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 There it is. We're very subtle, there by the way. There you know, we're we're just, yeah. Yeah. This. And all. <laughs> I love <laughs> that. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> so, I read something about I Love Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And here's what, here's what it said. I Love Lucifer is a female-driven comedy um, where two B-movie stars mm -hmm. battle movie monsters in the day and by night real monsters. So let's go over yep. this again. <laughs> so I Love Lucifer is absolutely, I call it, a funny horror comedy show. That's right. Literally. That's, right. That's what it Literally. is. Yep. Yes. So Susie, where it, did the idea come from? Tell me about I Love oh, Lucifer. Oh, okay. Well, so I did, I did a, um, a musical like in 2001 called Scream Queens ah. and it was it was um, the last musical I ever did and it was about these you know uh, uh, an aggregation of about a, a dozen Scream Queens who were at a convention oh. and they were sign you know like you do like they do and okay. signing autographs and waiting for fans right. and waiting for Roger Corman to show up for ah. and hopefully wow him for their next gig ah. and very uh, deep plot. Uh, very yeah, deep yeah, plot, but, but so much fun. And I really saw there was a there was very fertile this right. whole community. And and I at the time I was married to someone who was on a sci-fi show, and he was very popular and would go to all these um, conventions. And oh. I thought there's such a crossover between horror and and all these fans and right. they're, and they're it's just kind of a very fun and funny arena to play in. And I thought we need to play in this sandbox. Okay. So, and I also thought it's a, g a wonderful way to highlight women. Yes. And so, thus, the, t the women-driven kind of story, th you know, where they become stronger together than apart. Love and it. so they, they, you know, unwittingly <laughs> become demon fighters it, while they're trying to be movie stars. But also, they're like heroes. Yeah. In, Very I mean, much so. In a way. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. And it's really a parody on Hollywood. Like, the whole thing is like, you know, their agent is, it, their, their feature and, and movie agent is actually an agent for the devil. A so double agent. A double agent, oh, if you will. Agent, right? And, you know, which is And he's double dipping, too. He's so. double dipping, which is, <laughs> and so he, it's really, it's really, uh, it's, yeah, it, it, it's it, right on the nose. And just so it's clear, it, it's an audio podcast okay. is mm -hmm. what it is. It's like an old radio play, right. basically. Um, originally written as a screenplay, and, and uh, hopefully that's what it'll 
kind of come full circle. Well, I remember in a sanctum. I mean, yeah. we're going back a long ways, yeah. but we listened to it, and it was like the squeaking door. Where well, with uh -huh. you, it's the it's the monsters, mm -hmm. and actually sometimes you even get to like these monsters. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but but it's yeah. true. Well, we we were called we were told that we put the heart in horror. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, and I'm proud, uh, everyone, and you'll see it when you we're going to say where in a moment. But I'm part of it, and it is absolutely. Fun, 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 fun. It She's just is. so good she in it. She rocks in it. She is so good in it. I, we are so happy. You have to listen to it. If not for us, she is Thank so you. darling well. in it. You, you animal! How dare you? Do you know who I am? I am the producer's mother. I produced the producer. So where can people see this? That's the most important thing. Well, they, you know, they can hear it everywhere on all the major podca uh, podcast platforms. I mean, Apple, Apple and Stitcher and Spotify, Spotify and right. you know, Amazon. And I mean, th anywhere. You can go to, I just search I Love Lucifer, the podcast. Okay. There are a couple other I Love Lucifers, mm -hmm. but I Love Lucifer, the podcast. And you can find it anywhere. There's 10 episodes. They're all there. They're all bingeable. And we think you're going to have just an amazing time. It's a fun we, ride. You know, the, everyone who listens to Remember it so far. Remember, everyone, yeah. I love Lucifer. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to a completely different subject, something that's close to my heart because I went through it. Mm -hmm. Definitely you guys are going through it now. We're talking about Alzheimer's, everyone. And the movie is Mom and the Girl. My Mom and the Girl. My Mom and the Girl. Mm -hmm. I love it. And... Talking about caregivers and all. Susie, take, take it over. Okay. Tell, tell us about it. Well, my mother has had Alzheimer's for 15 years now. It can be a very long disease. Yeah. I call it the longest exit. And, um, and in some ways, you know, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. In other ways, I'm not. But I, she lived with me for a year. And out of that year, I, I learned how to embrace the disease and embrace my mother's journey so that it became more of a joyful Journey yeah, as a yeah, that's the word you yeah. use, and I go, mm -hmm. joyous? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. You have to, because yeah. otherwise, well, you're, otherwise you're living in, in, a, in a, a negative space. You're just, right. you know, and, and we're not taught how to, to deal with people with dementia or Alzheimer's. Unfortunately, it's been, it's a, it's a very um, marginalized yeah. <laughs> yeah. community, and people don't put a lot of stock into it, and we're changing that. The people in the community, like me, that are that are giving voice to it to it because because you know life doesn't i have i have a new saying which is memories are so yesterday because they are oh, they are yeah. and we put a lot of stock into memories as yeah. if they are the only things that matter but they don't and and what matters is now yeah, and today, and someone present. with dementia is this is such a, a the epitome of being a zen living zen moment to moment enjoying the moment because this is all we have yeah wow yeah now you chose for your uh character mm -hmm. in in the movie you chose valerie harper tell me how that journey was with her valerie was spectacular it was her last performance mm -hmm. And she gave it her all. She left a gift for everybody. I love her dearly. I am not sick. But after the bad days, what's not to love? Come the best days of your life. Baby, don't you wait up for me. None. What? You are my best friend, you dope. I'm very wealthy. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. Think about it. Oh, I will. It's good, isn't it? One of my favorites. Well, don't rush away. What are you doing? I'm not saying it was easy. Get away from me! Who are you? I'm saying it was worth it. I love it. Heavy, heavy duty. Mm -hmm. Heavy duty. So. A natural road to the next one is, it's called, uh, it's a podcast, mm -hmm. everyone, and it's, it's love, even, even the next step, and it's uh, 
to tell love you about. conquers all. Love conquers all. It's love. Yeah. Co- Not all, but all. All. Yes. Alz. Alz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We started a. I, I started a podcast right uh, coming out of the film after we finished the festival circuit because right. we traveled as a short film. You go to all over the world, and I realized how wonderful it was that it. I started conversations with strangers all over the world that I met, and and hugged and cried with more people in one year than I did in my wow. whole life. And I wanted a, I wanted a way to keep that conversation going and the conversation that the film started. So I thought I would start a podcast. And right before the pandemic, I did with another woman who I had met who had another film in, in the circuit on, on Alzheimer's. So we just dove in, didn't know a thing about it, but had the passion for it. Okay. And uh, so you well, ask questions? And we interviewed people that were all different. Re- people that are caregivers, people that are family members, experts, you know, people from Alzheimer's Association and, and the AARP, senators who are advocates for Alzheimer's, you name it. Lisa Gibbons. Lisa Gibbons. And, and in fact, that episode, won, uh, the podcast won Best uh, Podcast 2020 at the new, uh, new media. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh from that episode, and yeah, so it's and, now that, it's, and now it started. How many, as, how many have you yeah. done? Forty something. Forty three. Yeah. We're just starting our our uh, third season. I believe someone's going to be a guest because she has the most amazing I story. I think they mean what? Uh-huh. I am really excited because yeah. it gives me a chance to express my experience mm-hmm. with Alzheimer's, and everyone has their own little things. But when you Put them together, mm-hmm. it adds up to a lot. And her, of yeah, no, Pink's story is so so poignant and so right. It's so it, it, her instincts as a caregiver, your instincts as a caregiver, were amazing. I know, it's most surprise, people don't surprise me. Yeah, yeah most really. people don't have that, and it takes time. It's a learning curve. It does. It does. But um, yeah, we're starting our, our our third season with with episode forty four. Wow. And we're very excited, and it's a it's a passion project, and and it's. Something that we think is important because caregivers are, uh, are they are so important, they and are. and our senior generation is is growing what exponentially. I'm, what I'm getting, and I think my audience is getting this too, that you have two people here that care about the world and the people in it, and that's important because we don't have a lot of them today, but you two really do. We'll be right back. At one time or another. Every family is faced with mobility issues for a loved one. Call Before You Fall is here for you with all the safety and mobility solutions your family needs. Come see Alex in the Call Before You Fall showroom, or if you can't, they'll come to you in one of their fully stocked service vans. So put your mind at ease today. Call Alex at 1-800-829-1491. Remember, be on the safe side. Here's the one that I don't understand. <laughs> I told you the people are living their lives well, lots of lives. It's called Plain Jane. What is Plain Jane about? <laughs> okay. I mean, we're jumping from really Oh my gosh, I know. Stuff here. I know, I know. Well, so uh, as you know, I'm a writer. And yes, I. Um, yes. I, I was I was um, hired to write an adaptation of a book called it Plain Jane. Okay. And I was sent the book to read to see if it if it was a fit. And I read the book, and it was lo and behold, the the story is about a woman. It takes place all while she's doing a marathon. She's running the New Jersey Marathon, oh. which starts in Asbury Park. Well, my mother okay. was born in Asbury Park. N- point number one. That that was like very very you know coincidental. Then right. my daughter, who's going through at the time, was going about to start IVF, which, which is um, in vitro fertilization. Okay. And I didn't know anything about it because I'm um, fertile myrtle. That's all <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> and so I didn't know anything. It's a family about, show now. It, as I said, oh. fertile myrtle. That's it. <laughs> and constantly so, pregnant. Con- <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> we'll just keep it like that. Right. Okay. I'm the poster child for. <laughs> <laughs> for birth control. So I'm not proud, but it's true. And so um, I had just finished watching like three documentaries on oh. IVF because I didn't know anything about it. And this story talks, has the, one of the threads is about this woman who did IVF okay. and who had frozen some of her eggs. And oh. she helps a friend who can't, 
who doesn't have much time left to in her you know uh, productive cycle right, right. and gives her one of the eggs and it, and without it she does it without a conversation that she should have had with her husband and it and it really starts this whole avalanche of of of, uh, of issues and her marriage almost falls apart wow. and it really it really speaks to this modern age that we're in where we are manipulating reproductive yeah. process and we say are we playing god or are wow. we or you know what are we doing are we doing the right thing what is what is what are the what are what is the morality well what I, I like about it susie is that i feel that at my age that it's okay to be out there and to do whatever i want to do and to feel that i can do it and you make that you make me feel as a woman Hey, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like, well, yeah, I guess so. It's, mm -hmm. it's yes, you mm -hmm. can. Right. And I think it's fabulous. Now, you also did a couple of things before. What's Twinkle Toe? <laughs> <laughs> I, feel I, like I, I saw that. I said, I said, oh, my God, i got to tell my kids. Twinkle Toe, what is that? Twinkle Toe <laughs> was a movie that I was hired to write. It was an animated Film, a musical. Yeah, Twinkle Toes takes on get Broadway. Takes on Broadway. Yeah. yeah, it's available. Oh gosh, you yeah. can get it. Okay. And it was it's basically Skechers. Skechers has a product called Twinkle Toes. They're they're tennis shoes that light up. Oh, they light. I saw yeah, how yeah, my yeah. kids get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I they created it. a character. They created called a character, and oh I did their. I did. They did one movie, and then they did a sequel because it did so well. So I did Twinkle Toes too, which is Twinkle Toes <laughs> takes on Broadway, like you do. Oh, I and love that. yeah, yeah. And so it was so oh, much fun. So much fun! Oh, I know, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And when I wrote, I wrote Bratz the movie, and when I that's a, that's the other one. Now, Bratz the movie is what? With Bratz John Voight. I yeah, think John Voight played the principal. It was okay. kind of like a Mean Girls, but it was based on the the four the four main characters of the Bratz uh, dolls. Dolls. Oh. Yeah. And but it was live action. It was live action. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. My life has been like an adventure, up and down, and a roller coaster, and that road, and that road, and I'm here in the 90th year saying thank you to two people who are going to be here for a hundred years. <laughs> I mouth. want you here for my hundredth birthday though. I'm yeah, you definitely better believe you know, it. We got, we got to do it's that. It's on the calendar. We, we love the you. Calendar. We, we love you. Yeah, we got to do that. Everyone, may God bless you all. And may you meet two people like this on your own because they are fabulous. Watch what they do, hear what they do, and remember, I love Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it. Love you guys. God bless. Take care. I'll see you next time.